Joe Maurer, second in the AL in hitting. Justin Morneau leads the American League in home runs and runs batted in. The following program is a Sports Time Ohio original production. Three games against the first place Tigers, two wins for the Tribe. Next up, the third place Twins who are under the 500 mark after getting whacked by the Angels. Indian bats have been warm of late, which is good news for David Huff, who will try to cool down the Minnesota left-handed hitters. It's the first of three between the Tribe and the Twins, and it's next on STO. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Indians welcome into Minnesota Twins. It's an all-Central Division homestand for the Tribe, and they really took care of business against the Detroit Tigers, and a big part of that has been the resurgent Indians offense, a big reason why they've won seven of their last ten games. Well, a lot of it started out on the West Coast in Seattle where the long ball was around, but they have continued to carry that over, not only down into L.A., but when they come home against the Detroit Tigers, you know, offense is not going to stay with you all year long. It, it's hit or miss, and right now they've been playing very well offensively. Everybody seems to be surging, even though a few guys were traded out of this lineup. You know, with Garco Francisco and also Victor Martinez, these guys are continuing to hit. You can see averaging over seven runs a game, and they've just played very, very well, and they're starting to feed off each other. Hopefully that will continue. Yeah, and some of the new faces have been contributing, like Trevor Crow, Wyatt Torregas, and Chris Jimenez. Now the Indians have their hands full tonight, though. Scott Baker, he really contained the Indians' offense the last time they faced him. Ten punch-outs in that last meeting in Minnesota. He's a guy that uses four quadrants, up, down, in, and out. He's got the fastball, the slider, the curve, and the change. And if he's on his mark, he can be awfully tough to hit. But Scott Baker is uh, out there just a game over 500 on the year. And the Twins, that's what they need. They need their starting pitching to come around. And he's going to try and set the tempo for this series tonight. You can see 8-7 and seven on the year. Up against David Huff, coming off a good start, a loss in his last start, and he was beat at Minnesota in June. All right, so that's the matchup for tonight here at Progressive Field. We're back with the play-by-play -play next. Clouds have rolled in here to downtown Cleveland as the Indians and Twins open a three-game series here tonight at Progressive Field. And it will be David Huff against Scott Baker in this Central Division matchup here tonight. Minnesota comes in three and a half games off the pace in the AL Central, currently occupying third place and a game below the 500 mark. Indians behind the Twins. They're 11 and a half games out, 44 and 61. Indians... Definitely have been winning games of late. They've won seven of their last ten, eight out of their last 12. Twins, on the other hand, are lost six out of their last ten, including 
three in a row after really getting tattooed by the Angels. Well, yeah, they, they had a homestand where they swept the Chicago White Sox in a three-game series, and then the Angels came in, and they swept the, the Twins. And the Angels are, are playing as well as anybody in the game right now as far as offensively go because we just left L.A. last weekend, and the Indians are about ready to go to continue this Central Division rivalry. And the Tribe takes the field behind David Huff, who will be in the center of the diamond tonight. And with that, we'll take a look at Ron Gardenhire starting nine for the Minnesota Twins here tonight. It will be Denard Spann leading it off. He's the right fielder. The newly acquired Orlando Cabrera is at shortstop in the two-hole. Maurer and Morneau, one of the best 3-4 combos in baseball, followed by Jason Kubel and Joe Creedy, followed by Delman Young, Carlos Gomez, and Nick Punto. Well, David Huff will be making his 15th start this year, his second against the Minnesota Twins. David is 5-5, five and five, a 639 earned run average. Pitched really well in his last start. As a matter of fact, that came against the Angels, although he did get the loss. He pitched deep into the game, went out there in the eighth inning, allowed the first two runners to reach base before the bullpen, and Tony Sipp gave up the two runs that he left on. He ended up taking the loss. So he pitched much better than the numbers indicate. He lost his uh, first start to the Minnesota Twins back on June 2nd in Minnesota where he went five innings, gave up nine hits and four runs. So he will come back and try and even his ledger there. It's time now to take a look at the Indians defense brought to you by the Indians team shop where you can get two hats for $30. Crow, Sizemore, and Chew in the outfield. Peralta, Cabrera, Balbuena, Marte on the infield with Jimenez doing the catching. Let's have a look at the umpiring crew tonight. Sam Holbrook calling the balls and strikes. Larry Vanover is at first base. Ted Barrett at second. And James Hoy is down at third. For whatever this has worked, the Minnesota Twins come into this game tonight. Following an off day this year, they are 5-4. and four. The Indians following an off day this year are 8-4. and four. And a perfect 5-0 and at home following an off day. What so are you trying to say? I think the Indians uh, enjoy a little R&R, and they, they bring it right back to work the following day. Well, you have to play pretty much every day. <laughs> There's not too many off days. Now, I remember a few years ago. Total opposite, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, every time the Indians had an off day, they'd go into about a three- or four-day funk. All a matter of momentum, I suppose. Here's Denard Spann to lead it off for the Twins. And David Huff goes right at him with a first pitch strike. Denard Spann uh, ended up working out nicely for this leadoff spot. He and only Ichiro Suzuki are the two left-handers that are in the top ten against left-handed pitching. Spann hitting at 356 against the Southpaws. Now the 0-2. Got inside on him, but he's going to bloop this one in. And Span is aboard to start the ball game. Add to it. Well, he stays in. He really doesn't give any ground. It's not a bad pitch. It's a fastball inside. He just inside outs it. Got down on the trademark and bloops it in for a base hit. And that'll bring up Orlando Cabrera. Yeah, the last minute addition right around the trade deadline for the Twins. Orlando Cabrera was a guy that Minnesota was very interested in in the offseason. They looked at him as a potential free agent signee. The problem is Cabrera was a type A free agent. And the Twins really covet those draft picks. They would have had to give up their first-round pick in this year's draft had they signed him. Bouncer to third. Peralta to second for one. The relay in plenty of time. And around the horn it goes for a twin killer. Well, that was a nice turn by Valbuena because Peralta got double clutch and got the ball caught in his glove. And as Span was bearing down on Valbuena, he was still to go behind the bag and turn it. If he comes in front of the bag and tried to turn it like a lot of times the second baseman will, he's going to get knocked off his feet. So he made the wise decision to go behind it. They turned the double play for the 113th time this year. And that'll bring up Joe Maurer. 
with a robust 355 batting average. And he looks at a strike at the knees. What we've seen this year from Maurer that everyone surmised would eventually come with a little more seasoning, a little more age, is the power up to 18 home runs already this year. Well, and he came right out of the shoots when he missed the month of April. Well, he came right out hitting, didn't he? He had the bad back, stayed down at their spring training facility in Fort Myers. Did his rehab and just came out smoking and has been hot ever since. Again, a catcher that has a chance to win his third batting title. He'll be in the running with Ichiro Suzuki out there in Seattle. The one-two pitch. Hit in the air to center. Grady Sizemore back. Pulls it down, and the double play helps David Huff get through the inning without any trouble. Now Grady Sizemore will bring the Indians' bats to the plate when Indians come to bat here, bottom of the first. The lineup for Eric Wedge and the Tribe looks like this. Grady Sizemore is Drupal Cabrera, Shin Su Chu. Peralta, Hafner, and Jimenez in the middle. Valbuena, Marte, and Crow rounded out. The Indians starting lineup brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Grady Sizemore steps in to lead it off. And Sizemore, maybe more than any other Indians player, with that elbow injury, really benefits from having a day off. Tommy Bow looked up the numbers, and Grady in nine games that he has played following an off day, hitting 357 with three homers and a dozen runs batted in in those nine games. And you got to believe any time you can give that left elbow a little breather, a little break, it certainly helps. Well, on the year, a 229 average for Grady. Came out of the All-Star break really hot, swinging the bat well. And I, again, yeah, I get think three the, days off the there. The rest really helped. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like that for him the rest of the year. You know, it, if he chooses not to have surgery till the year's over, which he does, you know, it's going to be hit or miss. There's going to be times where Eric just might have to sit him down, period. That's why you need maybe Crow to go in there and give him a break. And but the only know, reason I bring it up is because he won't. Because Grady, well, the last no. guy in the world who would ever complain or talk about being injured is Sizemore. He's never well, going to use that as a, well, an you excuse. Can. When you go out between the lines, you're not hurt. I mean, you may be hurting, but if you go out there to play, you've got to be up to caliber. We have a lot of off days here. Mondays, what, the next three in a row are off, so yeah. you know we have a few breaks coming. This is game 106, so 56 to go after tonight. 
As Dribble Cabrera waiting on deck, then Shin Su Chu here in the first. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Let's take a look at the Twins' defense. They are rated second in the league. They have made 45 errors. It's Young in left, Gomez in center, Span is in right. Creedy at third, Cabrera at short, Punto at second, Morneau at first, and Maurer behind the plate. Scott Baker making his 21st start, an 8-7 and seven record. A lot of decisions. He's given up 20 home runs in his 120 and a third innings pitched. And interesting, in his first 10 starts... He gave up 15 home runs, and in his last 10, he's given up just five. So he's able to, you know, settle it down, and the long ball usually comes back to haunt you. But this young man is, uh, he's done a good job to settle in. One ball, one strike. He beat the Indians earlier this year on June 4th, went seven innings, had a career high, 10 strikeouts. And he's off to a start tonight with already one in the bag facing one hitter. In there for a strike. Two balls, two strikes to count on Cabrera with one out here in the first. As Dribble swinging a really hot bat right now. I mean, he's been consistently hot all year long. Well, he had some big hits in that Detroit series, although he did, you know, he was offering it, swinging a lot of pitches up and out of the strike zone. He did have some key hits in that series. Fouled back. After June 1st for Baker, his, he is 6-1. and one. So that goes to show you what keeping the ball in the ballpark has done for him. 3-2 pitch. Fouled away. Well, this Twins pitching staff, as you pointed out, really had their lunch handed to them in the series against the Angels. They gave up 35 runs on 52 hits in that three-game series, and the Angels hit 394 against them. Well, that's the second most, or no, that's, yeah, the second most hits they've ever given up. Look at this. This guy's starting out hot. Baker has struck out the first two here in inning number one. Well, you say about those hits, as you're going to watch Cabrera swing through a heater. Since they moved to Minnesota in 61, the only time they've allowed more than those 52 Angels hits was 53 to the Indians back in 1999. Another team that could swing the bats well. Back then, yes, they <laughs> could. I'd take the 99 Indians over those. The Angels yeah, right now? Yeah, of 09, yeah. Up 10 years ago, yes, I would. Not to say that it's not a knock on the Angels because they lead the league and run scored. Or right there. One ball, one strike. The count on Shin Su Chu with two down here in the first. High pop, left field, long run for Delman Young, but he's there. And the Indians go 1-2-3. After an inning here in Cleveland, no score.
the Cleveland Indians, Continental Airlines, work hard, fly right. Buy McCafe coffees at McDonald's, all made to order with fresh ground espresso beans. And by All Care Dental Indentures, we make seeing the dentist easy. Back here at Progressive Field, no score, second inning. Justin Morneau leading off, and he takes a strike. Morneau, 28 homers, 86 runs batted in. Big hopper to second. Valbuena will throw him out. One down. Let's have a look at the Altel Text Bowl question of the game. Which AL Central contender made the best trade, do you feel? The Twins to get our Orlando Cabrera, the Tigers netting Jared Washburn of the White Sox, grabbing Jake Peavy. Text your answer to 31962. We'll have the results coming up later in the game. Here's Jason Kubel, the Twins DH. And David Huff aggressively going right at him. He's thrown 12 pitches, 11 for strikes. That's it hard, deep to right field. Chu is back, and that one is going to the seats. Jason Kubel with his 19th home run of the year puts the Twins on top one to nothing. You know, he's turned it around and had a really a, a nice year to this point, hitting over 300. As you mentioned, 19 homers. He has 22 doubles. And the left-hander's in there. His knee is healthy, and David Huff gives up his 13th home run on the year. That ball stayed middle of the plate. Is that a breaking ball? Joe Creedy steps in, fouls the first pitch back. That's uh, Kubel's fifth home run against the Indians this year in his 10th RBI in 23 at-bats. Yeah, he's uh, swung the bat well against the Indians this year. One ball, one strike. Missed Dan off the plate. Two balls and a strike. You know, you talked about these two pitching staffs, the Twins and the Indians. They're, they're very similar. Uh, that's the 123rd home run given up by the Tribe this year. The Twins have given up 126. The Indians have given up over 1,000 hits. The Twins have given up 994. Creedy down the left field line, just foul. Well, George Carey take us uh, in the ballpark tonight with a souvenir. He's got his cane and everything. He's, uh, I don't think he needs the cane. He just uses that for it's a style thing with George. Well, he might have got the baseball with it. He flipped it up. <laughs> That's right. Reached maybe over gonna, the railing. Maybe he's going to use it as a fungo later <laughs> for the outfielders. Yeah. Brady pops it in the air, playable on the infield. Peralta Cabrera, it'll be his Drubal calling for it. Two down. Hey, you can save 70 to 81% off jewelry right now during the overstock sale at Alvin's. It's your Cleveland family jeweler since 1931. Thousands of items, rings, earrings, diamonds, pendants, all gold, up to 81% off. Find sale dates and locations at alvinsjewelers.com. Two down for Delman Young. He lines one to left. Trevor Crow plays it on a hop, and Delman Young with a two out single. Well, second pitch, it's been middle of the plate this inning, and both have been hit pretty hard. Carlos Gomez got to home plate, realized he had the wrong bet. He's going to go back and uh, get the right one. Now he's good well, to go. Well, I'm surprised he walked up to the play with it. Usually when he's in the on-deck circle, he smells the bat. <laughs> I guess that one must have smelled okay to get up there <laughs> until he felt something that was wrong. We, we will. We'll get a shot of you this series at some point in time. With him in the odd deck circle, and he really does. I'm not. I'm not joking. Maybe it's uh, he. Wants, he likes to smell of burnt wood. Well, and, and this is the first time I've seen him use an all dark bat. 
Usually he has the lighter wood, the ash. Bunts it foul, and Jimenez couldn't get to it. And no stranger for this guy to bunt with two outs or two strikes. Ask Cliff Lee. Yeah. They battled over the last two years about that. He's, uh, they had a little fracas this year in Minnesota. Not with the two-out bunt, but with a two-strike bunt. Cliff has yelled at him a couple of times. He won't have to worry about that anymore, will he? No, I guess not. He'll need a new foil. The 0-1. Foul back. I'm always under the mindset that when you have a guy on base and there's two outs, you've got to try and drive him in. You know, try and hit a gap. It's early in the ball game. And you have a one nothing lead. You don't need base runners. You want to add to that one nothing lead. So why not swing the bat? The throw to first and back standing is Delman Young. Gomez 0 for his last six, just two hits in his last 12 at bats. You know, he did lead the majors last year in bunt hits. Well, and infield hits. He was second each year on infield hits. Okay, well, that's right. You forget about that guy on <laughs> the left coast. You can't beat him. No, that's impossible. <laughs> but this is a guy that's been a little disappointing this year. They got him for a leadoff hitter. He's part of that Johan Santana trade with the Mets. You know, he only has 10 stolen bases, hitting 230. He, for a guy that has to utilize his speed, takes an awfully big swing for, yes. you know, for a little hitter. You've commented on that since we first saw him. Yeah, I mean, you watch him even in batting practice, and when he gets a count in his favor, he swings so hard. Now, it's one thing, but when you only have two home runs, you would think that it would sink in. The 0-2 ran it up out of the strike zone. And that's a that's a good idea with a guy like Gomez. Raise it up, see if oh, he'll go. You don't him. have to throw him strikes. He will swing out of the strike zone without a doubt. You can climb the ladder, elevate it, elevate your pitches. There's one in the dirt that'll get away. It'll be the first wild pitch for Huff this year. So Delman Young in the scoring position with two down. Tried to change his eye level there after the high fastball went down to the back foot slider and it's short hops Jimenez. Now the 2 2. A little bit too low. Full count. Nick Punto, the on deck hitter, batting ninth. Having a rough year offensively. The reason why they went out and got Cabrera. Now the payoff pitch. Fouled back out of play. Now, I think it's interesting you mention that, Rick, because Punto was a guy who I believe he was a free agent at the end of last year, and the Twins re-signed him. Two-year contract. Payout pitch fouled back out of play and talked about, you know, their interest in Orlando Cabrera at the time. I think it came down to what do you want to do? What's What's the path of least res resistance, I suppose? Well, you want to go out and pay a guy 4 to $5 million? We want to keep our own guy that we know that can field his position. Shortstop, second base, beautifully. I mean, defensively, he's he's a gem. And it's like a Johnny McDonald is what he's like. And you don't have to give up the draft pick. And you don't have to lose a draft pick. And, you know, maybe he'll have a good year. Line to center, a base hit. Coming around third, Delman Young, he's going to score. And the Twins lead it 2 to nothing on a two-out RBI hit by Carlos Gomez. After he had him down in the count, 0-2. And then the wild pitch ends up hurting David Huff, and now the Indians will look at a 2-0 deficit. 
you have to throw him a strike here, but he went down instead of elevating the fastball, and he, he, he will chase upstairs, and you don't really have to throw him a strike because first base was open, and I'm sure he'd swing, but he gets a base hit, third hit in the inning, and that'll bring up Nick Punto. Punto hitting just 213 on the year, six doubles. Looked like a good pitch, but it's called ball one. That one's called a strike, and the count evens at one and one. Huffs 1-1. One, one. Hard ground ball to second. Valbuena's got it. Throws him out, and the inning is over. But the two-out RBI hit by Gomez adds to the homer hit by Kubel. And it's 2-0 Minnesota, middle of the second. We welcome you back here to Progressive Field. Youngster looking for some new gear. <laughs> She's saying it'll fit him. You better try it on just to make sure. Oh, boy. Hi there. Johnny Peralta looks at a first pitch strike from Scott Baker. Bottom half of inning number two. Peralta has really been hot. You talk about a guy who's locked in offensively over his last 11 games. Johnny's batting 417, and he scored 11 runs in those 11 games and driven in 17. Hop back out of play. No balls and two strikes. Since the All-Star break, only Kendry Morales, and we know how hot the Angels have been scoring runs, driven in more than Peralta. A late swing on that one, and it skipped back into the seats. The 0-2. Johnny shoots it down the right field line and into the corner foul. 
I suppose that's, that right there is a sign of a guy who's just seeing the ball well right now, able to get to that pitch and just spoil it, and he almost hit it for a well, double. Johnny always loves the ball away, and it was that, that pitch was up. So it's going to be easy for him to reach out there and just slap it that way. That's why a lot of teams try to pitch Johnny inside. They crowd him, get him, getting him look in, to look inside on the inside part of the plate. And once he does, then you can get him away or get him to chase breaking balls. But when he's locked in and he's been swinging pretty well, he hasn't missed the hanging breaking ball. And he's been, you know, flaring some balls in when they make good pitches on him. He's been hot. Now the one-two pitch. Bouncer to third, routine for Joe Creedy. One away. Hey, fans, don't forget, every time the Indians homer this year, we raise money for the Gathering Place, a wonderful, caring community that helps individuals and their families battling cancer. Great Clips donates $50 every time the Indians go deep, over $7,000 this year. You can make a donation as well. Log on to touchbycancer.org or just simply log on to learn more about the Gathering Place. Travis Hafner takes a strike. Pronk batting 274, 11 home runs, 28 runs batted in for the year. And has hit Scott Baker very well in his career. 10 for 21, four dingers and seven ribbies. Popped him up on the infield, and back goes the shortstop, Orlando Cabrera. Two quick outs. Let's go back to the studios right now for a Ford Sports update with Al Pulaski. Matt, Rick, we go to Toronto where uh, Doc Halliday is on the mound for the Blue Jays. Here's one way to beat him, I guess. Grounded to first, Halliday covering. Whoops, dropped the ball. Here comes A-Rod around for a home. Rod Barajas drops the ball. 2-0 Yankees, second inning now in Toronto. All right, thanks, Al. Here with two down bases empty, Chris Jimenez steps in. And I would imagine Ron Gardenhire and Rick Anderson have to be tickled. At least it's to this point in the game they have to be anyway. The Bakers, he looks sharp here early in the game. And the thing with uh, the Twins pitching staff, Ron Gardenhire said, look, we've got a young pitching staff. They have a chance to be really good, but they've just been too inconsistent to well, be good. Second-year pitchers, they were all rookies last year that had very good years. And you know what happens. The league makes adjustments, and now it's their turn to make an adjustment. Indians go 1-2-3, and Baker is perfect through 2. 2-0 two Minnesota.
2 nothing Minnesota. Third inning here at Progressive Field. Top of the order for the Twins. Denard Spann, Orlando Cabrera, and Joe Maurer. Huff misses outside ball one. David Huff and Chris Jimenez, the battery combination for the Indians tonight, both took part in the Indians charity golf outing yesterday at Quail Hollow. And thanks to everyone who came out and took part in the event. A success as always. Yes, it was. It was a great success. All money's raised going to Cleveland Indians charities. There's the numbers, almost 100 points That's, higher from the left side. Isn't that something? Yeah. Yeah, it's rare do you see a left-hander do that. We talked about it only. He and Ichiro in the top ten as far as left-handed batters go against lefties. But you can see why, because he has such a short stroke, and he waits on the ball anyway. So I guess a lefty, he just gets to see it a little bit longer, and he he can hit the breaking ball. The first time up, he jammed him with a fastball. You can see no stride. Really, he's just more of a handsy hitter and, and lets his hands get through the hitting area. And he stands pretty close to the plate, but as you said, even when he got jammed, he just fought it off. short to the ball. Yeah. Swung and missed. Got him to go after a pitch, elevated it a bit. And Huff gets his first strikeout, one down here in the third. Well, and that's where you would think he would be susceptible. But that time he chased one out of the zone. If you make him get it down, that's a ball. So he helped out David Huff, and that's why Huff gets his first strikeout. He realized it after he swung, but that's an easy pitch to go after. Now Orlando Cabrera bounced into a double play his first time up. Pops it high and out of play. We want to send out some uh, get well wishes. Uh, you remember Chuck Metzger, don't you? Yeah. He'd come down there. He'd help us out in, in Winter Haven, run the cable, and be part of our crew. Well, his wife, Jan, is recuperating in uh, Marysville. She had hip surgery. So, Jan, we want to wish you well. Get well soon. And, Chuck, hello. Take care of her before you come see us. <laughs> Tight called strike to the outside corner, and Cabrera down the count 0-2. Now the two-strike pitch. Line toward That's right center field. In the alley it goes, and Chu can't cut it off. So Cabrera's got himself at least two, and he'll hold there with a one-out double. You know, that is amazing. That is the third 0-2 count that David Huff has had. Minnesota's 3-for-3 three three in those situations. Two good of pitches? Uh, well, look at it. That was a hanging breaking ball. It, yeah. They have to be. When you get down in the count 0-2, and it was it was actually Gomez who we had down 0-2. He got the base hit, 3-2. So, yeah, I guess so. Firestone League leaders, Firestone, a tradition of innovation, shows us that Orlando Cabrera has now extended his hitting streak to 14 games with that double. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, we broke his when he was with Oakland when he came here. His 13-game hitting streak ended here in this ballpark. I'll have to go look it up. Joe Maurer, slow tapper towards first. Is it going to stay fair? Yes, it will. Marte will tag the big guy. Two down. Cabrera moves over to third. And that will bring up Justin Morneau, who grounded out the second his first time up. Good fastball down the strike zone, and... Maurer just topped it up the first baseline. Boy, that's, you won't see that often with him. That's a good out right there. Well, so many times he'll take a strike, maybe take two strikes, and work the count deep before he even offers that a pitch. Justin Morneau looks at a strike on the outside corner.
Minnesota Twins this year have been throttled by the American League Eastern Division, losing 19 of 25 games played against the East. They've also played below 500 against the AL West, losing 16 of 30. But they have made their bones within the division, which we have always said is the key to winning the Central. They've gone 20 and 12 against divisional opponents, and they also went 12 and 6 in interleague play. So their record has been buoyed by the fact they've won in the division, and they yeah. played well in interleague play. That's what's uh, and they're that them again. They're in the right division, the Central Division of the American League is a little shaky this year. To be 500 and be in it. This late in the year. And I mean, when you say in it, they they are exactly three that. And half, three, three and a half, half back. games back. Time call. You know, the Twins, like a lot of teams in the American League, thrive at home and really struggle on the road. 21 and 30 on the road for Minnesota. I mean, Detroit, a woeful 10 games below 500 on the road. But as you pointed out, only the Angels, Yankees, and Red Sox have winning records on the road in the American League this year. Yeah, and you expand that throughout baseball. Only seven teams in all of baseball have winning records on the road. Big bouncer foul, first base side. Well, in the Twins' case, they average about a run more per game at home, and that certainly helps when your pitching has been bad. You know, their pitching is going to be, you know, par for the course about the same but they score more runs and, and that's that turf they'll be going into a new ballpark next year the target target field they may lose some of that home field advantage payoff pitch hit high in the air on the infield Balbuena at second base comes in inning over the one out double does no damage two nothing minnesota middle of the third Now that Twins looks lead. nice right there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I wondered where that shot was going. Is that actually a massage? Yeah, that's you can going actually on. Do that? Yes, indeed. I thought that was just. I think they had ladies' night, women's night here. She was out just at the beating up on it. where you could get a nice look at massage, okay. a little rub done. Yeah, that's all taking place tonight for the ladies. For the women coming to the ball game, did you guys get that done? No, no massages. Go on out there. You still have time. <laughs> They went for the beer. They didn't go for the massage. Val Bueno looks at a breaking ball that just missed up high.
you know, Scott Baker in his last start, he's the one that was matched up against Mark Burley. Look at Valbuena. Less than 200 at bats. He's up there with 15 doubles. And Beckham, of course, the young rookie. But Scott Baker, you know, remember when Burley was, he built on that string. He had 45 consecutive batters that he mowed down. This was his battery mate, and Baker had retired 17 of the first 20 batters in that ball game as well before he gave up the that solo home run to Jermaine Dye. And then they ended up getting too burly. That was fun to watch. We were well, we must have been on the road or something watching that, where he came out and the fans were, or, you know, the twins. People were tipping their caps and gave him a nice round oh, the of applause. Players. The, the Minnesota he, he, players, yeah, were. the players. He 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 walked. Was it go, no uh, the Casilla? Then they ended up getting a hit. Then they broke the shutout. Albuena shoots it foul. That was a heck of a run for Burley. Heck of a streak. And to think, you pitched a perfect game. And had it rolling again, and you're yeah. thinking, no, this can't happen, right? Well, well, it's not going to twice in a row. You're only perfect once, if you're lucky. And only Johnny Vandermeer is throwing back-to-back no-hitters. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Foul down the left field line. Valbuena, Andy Marte, Trevor Crow here in the home half of the third. Pretty good battle here. Now the 2-2. Hard ground ball hit to short. And Cabrera throws him out. One down. Let's look at our great clip of the game from Sunday. Andy Marte got a big base hit right here. Going down that left field line. As the Indians brought home a couple of runs. Relax, you're at Great Clips. So here is Marte. And a breaking ball catches the outside corner for strike one. And Marte goes right back up the middle of the base hit. Indians get their first knock of the night. And it comes with one out here in the third. Pitch was up, up in the strike yeah, zone. Yeah, right back up the middle. But that is the Indians' first hit. So a one-out single for Marte. And it will bring up Trevor Crow. Switch hitting outfielder, batting ninth. Takes a strike at the knees. You look at his numbers overall, nothing to get excited about, but since coming back, He's got six hits and 14 at-bats. That equates to a 400 average. He scored four runs, two doubles, a triple, two runs batted in. So for whatever the reason, maybe third time a charm. But he seems to be a more comfortable hitter, a more patient, maybe a little more relaxed now that this is his third go-around with the club. Well, I think sometimes for young players it helps when you know you're going to play every day. You know, you you, you come to the ballpark, you you know you're going to play, you get into a little routine, and it helps. What's that ball up high? When you're young, that's how you learn. I mean, you've got to come to the ballpark and play. You can't sit on the bench. There's nothing you can learn. You can sit and watch and observe and talk and, you know, do your work and take your batting breaks, but unless you're in the game... There's not much you can learn.
That's why I don't think young young players are, are platoon players are any good. Marte runs on the two one pitch, but it's fouled back. It's not like in football where a young quarterback can stand with the clipboard and and watch and observe and learn that way. Baseball, you have to learn by playing playing and doing it first. That's exactly right. And learning and playing and and filing it away in your memory bank and remembering that pitcher and the team. And you have to play baseball. Because that's the that's the only way a, a team is going to be good when you have everyday players out there. You can't platoon at two or three different positions. You've got to have guys that go out there day in and day out and play. You yeah. don't have enough roster spots to have enough platoon guys to make that work. Not when you're carrying 13 pitchers anymore. Yeah. You know the day of the extra men are pretty much over. You've got guys that play three or four positions, but you don't carry extra position players. It's always a pitcher. That's the specialty of, the, of today's matchup. Now the 2-2. And again, it's fouled away. So if nothing more, the Indians are at least making Baker work for it here in the third inning. Fouling off and spoiling a number of pitches. Mar- Valbuena had a terrific bat in doing that, although eventually he grounded out. And then Marte... Got the first hit right after it. Now we'll see if Crow can square one up, put it in play, and keep the pressure on here in the third. Slowly hit to second. Punto flips it over, two down. Well, the Tribe will finish this homestand in the series out with the Twins on Thursday. It'll be a 12.05 start, and it's lunch in three innings day. If you purchase a $15 upper reserve or mezzanine ticket, you'll receive a $10 food voucher for any concession stand here at the ballpark. That's a pretty nice deal. Take your lunch at the ballpark. Stay for three innings, or actually, once you get here, I'm sure you'll stay for the whole game. That'll be Thursday, 12.05, and then it's on to Chi-Town. For what seems like our uh, weekly trip to Chicago this year. Yeah, our fourth and final. Here is Grady Sizemore. Takes a strike. He struck out his first time up. The 0-1. Slowly hit to second baseman Nick Punto. He throws him out. And the inning is over. Three complete from Progressive Field. It's Minnesota 2, Cleveland nothing.
Progressive Field, where the Twins lead the Indians 2 to nothing. fourth inning. Jason Kubel, Joe Creedy, and Delman Young. Jason Kubel, I think, is a guy that's finally healthy this year for the Twins. He's had knee problems in the past and surgeries, and it seems like his legs are pretty much underneath him this year. One reason why he is having a very solid year. Down on the dirt. Well, we talked so much in the past about Mauer and Morneau. You need that one other guy. You need somebody in there to, to help. Well, and usually it's Kadaya. Yeah, that's the guy who, you know, when he's healthy, he's normally terrific. But, you know, he's had some injury problems two years. in and out of the lineup. Yeah. But, you know, the thing about the Twins, they're all left-handed dominant. When you figure Denard Span leading off left-handed, then you got Maurer, Morneau, Kubel. You know, they're looking for some right-hander to yeah. step up. Sizemore coming in. He'll play it on a hop. This and kid, boy, oh Kubel boy. is two for two tonight, and he just continues to tear up Indians pitching. He loves seeing Chief Wahoo come to town. After taking him deep, there's another pitch inside that he just goes the other way with. So a good approach after hitting the home run instead of trying to go deep. He got another base hit. That's six hits now for the Twins. Joe Crady popped up on the infield his first time up. Here's a guy they took a flyer on when you, you know, signed. It's worked out well. You know, but I'm saying that the signing a late, a free agent. The Chicago wasn't going to sign him because of back issues. Twins needing a third baseman. They ended up signing Joe Crady. And I think they've been somewhat judicious. He's played in 75 games, so they realize with his back, you're going to need some he's, days off yes. with the turf. You know, and he he's a solid defender. One hot for Valbuena will go to second, get the lead runner there. Cabrera on the relay, not in time. That ball looked like it was in slow motion going to Valbuena. And that's the only reason they don't turn two there. Because it had spin going away from him. He had to almost, watch how quickly his feet are moving to get in his position to throw the ball. And once he realized, okay, I'm there, he gave Cabrera a nice feed, but just, you know, just too slow. Even Creedy could beat that one out. Now Delman Young, who had a base hit, scored the Twins' second run in the second inning. You know, speaking of the Minnesota Twick, uh, the, the Minnesota turf, Joe Maurer said that when he first started, guys like Torrey Hunter would tell him, you just wait, wait, playing on this turf, you're going to start feeling it. But he was so young initially, he said, yeah. never had any problems. He said, all of a sudden this year, it's the first time this year that he's felt it. He's starting to feel the effects of the turf, you know, the back, your joints just a little stiff after a long homestand. That's what I keep telling you up in the booth. You just wait. <laughs> you just wait. Your back's going to be sore <laughs> from these chairs. <laughs> well, the turf gets to you, and it's much better turf now than what it was at one point in time. It's that field turf oh. now that's so nice and yeah. soft and smooth. I mean, still it takes a toll on its body. As, it, you know, natural grass does. The, the more years you play up here, it takes a pounding. And that guy's got the equipment on his behind there every day. Luckily for you, you played in the American League because it, it seemed like in the 70s, almost every National League park was turf. Well, all, those, all the new stadiums were in. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, were, Cincinnati. Right, they were all Houston, the new, the the new round uh, uh, cookie cutter Even Candlestick stadiums. had turf for a while out in San Francisco. That went off the back foot there, a young. Uh, so... You're right. That that old AstroTurf was just They had it, let me think, brutal. Toronto, um, Seattle, Kansas City. 
for the most part. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Which for a while there, it seemed like, you know, when, you, when I remember when being a kid and people would talk about the American League versus the National League, the National League was speed because of the, I always thought it was because yeah, of the turf. on the carpet, man. It's, oh, yeah. it's a faster game. There's no question. You had to have better arms in the outfield. You had to play a little bit deeper. The infielders had to play deeper. Swung on a miss, got him to go fish, two down. Second strikeout for David Huff. Let's go down on the farm and look at our Subway fresh face of the game. Scott Barnes, right-hander at Kinston. He came over from the Giants in the Ryan Garko trade. Second start with Kinston last night, four and two-thirds scoreless innings. And look at his numbers on the year, 12 and three, with just a 2.84 earn run average. Subway, play hard, eat fresh. And a strike to the outside corner for Carlos Gomez. This was a pretty good at bat he had first time up. He was down on the count. And then he wound up with two strikes, getting a two-out RBI single to center that made it two to nothing. And again, he's down on the count 0-2. Oh That one's in the dirt, nicely blocked. <laughs> Runner at first with two down and a one two pitch coming. And a line drive Another softly hit o inside two. the line. Over to the line to cut it off is Crow. In the third is Creedy. And in the second, with his second straight two out, two strike hit is Carlos Gomez. Boy, oh boy, you better not get to 0 2. Normally, you'd tell a pitcher, get you down, uh, get him down to the count 0 2. Well, they are four for four when Huff has had him. Four for six? I was talking. I missed the other two, huh? <laughs> As always. That'll be the second double of the evening for the Twins. And Gomez is now two for two, so that'll give Nick Punto another chance with two outs. And a strike to the outside corner for David Huff. Punto bounced out the second his first time up. And he goes right out to that outside corner again. Nothing into the count. Well, that's been a, a problem for David this year. Hitters are hitting 341 coming into the day with the runners in scoring position. Not only that, but as we've seen and we talked to Carl Willis about it, getting ahead he's been able to do. It's putting them away when he gets to two strikes. That's the, the big learning curve right now. Yeah, sometimes you don't. When you get ahead, you don't have to throw strikes. You get them to chase your pitch. You get a couple of pitches to work with to set them up for what you really want to put them away with. Now, when Chris Jimenez is catching, he may not have that philosophy yet because he doesn't know the hitters. Let's say like Martinez would or if Shopik was in there. That's something he's going to have to learn. So they're both learning together. Yes, indeed. Two-strike pitch. Nailed there the outside go. corner. And Punto stands there frozen at the dish. Third strikeout for Huff. 2-0 Minnesota middle.
here at Progressive Field. It's a 2 nothing Twins lead as we go down to the home half of the fourth inning. Oh, we got the cheerleaders here tonight. Oh, Maslin Jackson representing here at Progressive Field tonight. The Maslin Jackson Polar Bears. They're getting ready for football. It won't be long. Maybe that's why they're enjoying their last game. <laughs> they got to practice and get sure ready for the season. Cheerleaders have two days too, don't they? Yes, Maybe. they do. Yeah. Tryouts the whole nine yards. They got Bob Uecker seats. <laughs> that's all Murph could afford. One-one pitch up high, two and one to his dribble. Cabrera struck out his first time up. Seventeen pitches in the first inning for Baker, thirteen in the second, twenty in the third. Cabrera bloops one towards shallow center. Gomez got a good jump, but it won't matter because Cabrera makes the grab quickly. One out. I was watching Gomez come flying in there, and that ball never. Never got legs. Kind of like most of my chip shots yesterday. <laughs> Here is Shin Su Chu. Takes the first pitch strike. We want to send out a special hello to Martha Hills from Hudson, who sent us a nice note. Catches the tribe on Sports Time Ohio. That's right, Martha. Thanks for the note. Appreciate your thoughts. Martha grew up in Pittsburgh. She used to listen to Rosie Rosewell and Bob Prince and catch games at Forbes Field, but now she's she's a diehard tribe follower. Good for her. Chu hits one high in the air, deep to left. Young is back. He's got room, and he'll pull it down on the warning track two away. Well, tickets are available for the AM PM All You Can Eat seats. It's a $32 upper reserve ticket. It includes unlimited dogs, popcorn, peanuts, nachos, and Pepsi products. Visit Indians.com and any Indians team shop to get your tickets. Purchase your seats today. Johnny Peralta grounded a third his first time up. And this time he grounds it past third. In the left field, Peralta stays hot with a two-out single in the left field. And Johnny Peralta has hit in four straight games. And that's his 21st hit now in his last dozen games played. Trying to run the two-seamer inside, but Johnny wasn't going to let him do it. It was elevated. Second hit for the Indians. This one, a two-out single. The other one came last inning. It was a Marte one-out single. Travis Hafner popped the short his first time up. And the pitch is outside for ball one. Pronk trying to snap an 0 for 8 skid. He hasn't had one of those stretches where he's been blistering hot, but he has consistently hit really since coming off the DL on June the 5th. He's batted 276 overall. He's had a hit in 26 of the 37 games played. On base safely in 32 of the 37. It just it just hasn't been with the authority no, that you're used to seeing from Pronk. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean that ball jumping off. He's he's flared a lot of balls off. Hey, hits are hits, granted. But it, it seems like a lot of times a lot of teams have been burying him inside. Well, that's know, a good sign that he laid off that pitch right there. That's a that's one that they've been able to entice him to go after. It's in off the plate. How many years did we see the big pronk go into Minnesota where his folks used to come from Dakota and they'd go in to watch him play and hit for the cycle that one year. Fair ball down the first baseline. This will head its way into the corner. 
Into third base goes Johnny Peralta, and then Joel Skinner will hold him there. And now Peralta slides back in safely at third. So a two-out double for Hafner. Indians at second and third. And the Indians kind of caught a bad break there because it got down into the corner, but it hit the sidewall and kicked out as opposed to staying closer to the line and going all the way into the corner. If it does, they get at least a run yeah, there. Well, they, he hit that ball with authority. See Maurer reaching back up. He was looking in the air for it. He didn't realize it was on the ground. But it got out there in a hurry, and you're right. If it doesn't hit the sidewall, Peralta scores. That's why Skinner put the late hold up. But that's uh, back-to-back two-out hits. And it's going to take one more to get him on the board. This is where Baker last year was so tough with the Twins, was with runners in scoring position. With the runners in scoring position, two out last year, he had a 185 average. And a 225 in just regular scoring position. This year, it's a 359 average with two outs. 341 on the normal. Now Chris Jimenez would love to pick up a two-out hit right here and tie the game. One ball, one strike. Baker about to make his 65th pitch of the night. And the 1-1 one, one is swung on and missed. Another one, two. Just missed outside. Two balls and two strikes. Well, if you miss, that's a little slider. You want to miss off the plate. He certainly did. Chris Jimenez lives for another pitch. Peralta at third, half of the tying run at second with two down here in the fourth. Baker's 2-2 pitch popped in the air, deep to center. Back goes Gomez, still going back. Jumps up and makes the catch. Bangs into the wall and hangs on. Now Jimenez gave it a ride, but Gomez there to save the day for Baker and the Twins. And Minnesota stays in front 2-0.
All right, we go now to the fifth inning. Go ahead, have a seat. There's plenty. Just pick pick any seat you want. Go ahead. Two nothing. Twins on top. It'll be Denard Span, Orlando Cabrera, Joe Maurer here in the fifth. Chris Jimenez came within about maybe a couple of feet of tying this game up. Another two feet, that would have been off the wall and they've been tied up. Span singled in the first. Raced on a double play ball, then he struck out to start the third. So already leading off for the third time tonight. It's ball four, so a leadoff walk. First free pass issued by Huff tonight. And let's take a look at the direct energy bringing the gas sequence. You go back into the third inning, and it was Denard Span, the man he just walked. And he was strikeout number one. You look out, he had that breaking ball. Still doesn't have a feel for it yet tonight. He missed with that twice and went with a fastball away. Fastball fouled off. He got him to chase the fastball. Simple solutions for your natural gas needs. Direct energy. Orlando Cabrera, one ball, no strikes. He doubled his last time up. And if Huff can't get that breaking ball for a strike, that's going to make it difficult for him as we get here into the middle innings. Good fastball. And as he's going through this lineup for the third time, this is where those veteran Twins hitters can make the adjustment. Some key matchups here. Well, especially if you're, you know, you're short in your repertoire and you don't have that breaking ball that you can throw or at least get a chase, especially for the left-handers. They have four left-handers in the lineup. And then you could also, you know, right-handers will end up forgetting about it and they'll just sit on that fastball or change-up. And then depending on the situation in the count, they'll cut that in half. There goes Span. Ball hit in the air again to right center. And again, it's going to split the outfielders. Again, it will go to the wall. This time, it's going to bring Span all the way around and score from first. Into second with an RBI double is Orlando Cabrera, 3 0 Minnesota. Now, well, Minnesota figuring, okay, we've got an early lead. We're going to the middle part of the ball game. They started Denard Span taking off. Cabrera again finds the gap. He's going to hit a double here. It's another pitch up in the zone. So he has left the pitches that he has put in the middle of the play, Twins hitters have taken advantage of. That is now eight hits. It's a 3 0 ball game. So for Cabrera, his 43rd RBI, his second straight double. Well, and now he's got to deal with Joe Maurer, who's 0 for 2. Well, now you get the next three tough left-handed outs. The 0-1, fouled right back, nothing into the count. By the way, that double for Orlando Cabrera, not only his second of the game, but the 400th of his career. That's a lot of doubles. There's a hanging breaking ball right there he got away with. Ron Gardenhire wants Cabrera to really 
help the younger players on this Twins team. O2 pitch, fouled back. And they feel like already he's gotten in there and talked with guys like Carlos Gomez, Alexi Casilla, even Joe Creedy saying that Cambrera is consistently talking to the younger players. Well, he spent time with the White Sox over there when Creedy was there, and he knows this division. He's not a stranger to it. Now the 0-2. That's how good an eye he has at the plate. Would not chase just a little bit off the plate and wouldn't go after it. Well, you're looking at one of the most disciplined hitters in the league. You know, and not much of a track record to go on with David Huff, but that's how good his eye is. Big bouncer fair. First baseline down the right field line. That'll bring home Cabrera. In the second base with another double. And Joe Maurer has his first hit of the night. Already the fourth double tonight for Minnesota. Tried to run the heater by him inside after he laid off. You know that, and that's what you do as a pitcher. You say, man, he just took that breaking ball, so I'm going to throw him inside. Well, he didn't get it in there. Maurer got enough of it to keep it inside the bag. And that'll be a double for him. So that is double number 20, or excuse me, n double number 17 for Maurer. And they do not have anybody out here in the fifth. Here so. comes Carl Willis for a chat. As Jensen Lewis warms up in the Indians' bullpen. Well, I mean, this, this isn't anything that should surprise us. I mean, we, we talked about it. After he walked in hard span, third time through, his inability to, to command that breaking ball, show them another pitch. These veteran hitters, they just start sitting back or waiting for it now. Well, and David's been one of those guys. It's, it's the times he's been able to go six or more innings, he has won. Four out of his five wins have, have come that way. But his, la his only loss came in his last start. When he went seven innings, and he sucked up the L because he went out into the eighth, got two base runners, the bullpen gave it up. But that is the fifth hit. That Maurer double there was the fifth time tonight that a Minnesota twin hitter was down in the count 0-2, and they were able to get aboard. So that tells you they can put him away. Yeah, five of their nine hits have come that way tonight. One and one. Up the middle it goes into center field. Another run going to try to come home. Here comes Maurer. Sizemore's throw will be cut off. And it's 5 nothing Minnesota. So four straight have reached here in the fifth. A walk, two doubles, and now a single. Three straight runs across the dish. Still nobody out. And it's one of those starts for David Huff where you figure, okay, it's a young guy. You know you'll have a good one or a couple of good ones, and then the next thing you know, you take a step backwards. Well, they're starting to get a feel for the speed of that fastball, and the location for him has not been very good tonight. Jason Kubel follows that one off his foot. He has homered and singled tonight. Missed outside. One ball, one strike. 88 pitches so far for Huff. And he may just be running out of bullets now. Catches the corner. One and two.
Did he go? He did, says home plate umpire Sam Holbrook. And that's the fourth strikeout for Jason Kubel. Another look at the all tell text ball question of the game. Which AL Central contender made the best deal at the deadline? The Twins picking up Cabrera, the Tigers getting left hander Jared Washburn, or the White Sox getting Jake Peavy? Text your answer to 31962. Results later in the game. Creedy pops it up to shallow right. In comes Chu. He'll make the catch. Two away. Let's go back to the STO studios right now for a Ford Sports update with Al. All right, guys, we go to Chicago South Side where the White Sox are hosting the Angels, and Gordon Beckham, the rookie, goes yard for the sixth time this year. That puts Chicago ahead one to nothing. They're down the top of the second inning. One nothing. White Sox over the Angels thus far. Those Angels will be back with that offense. Don't worry about it in that ballpark. The youngster Beckham, though, has had a very impressive rookie season. Yeah, he, he certainly has. He's a ball. He's a baseball player, man. He's he's going to be a good one. Here's a guy that's been a little disappointing for the Twins, making that trade with Tampa where they sent Garza, also Bartlett, getting Delman Young. He just hasn't really fit in and, and, and blossomed like they thought he would. He smacks, uh, smacks that one in the left field. Stopping at second is Morneau. Young is two for three tonight. So two on two out for Carlos Gomez. There's another. There's a breaking ball that was down. That time it was down. There, we, nothing you can do, and that's going to do it for David Huff this evening. Eleven hits in his four and two thirds innings. And we'll be right back. Twins on top, fifth inning. David Huff out after four and two thirds innings. In comes Jensen Lewis. Lewis on for the 30th time this year. Two wins, three losses, earned on average 4.91. And 40 in the third innings. He's walked 17, struck out 38. He'll be facing Carlos Gomez, who is two for two tonight with a single, a double, and a run batted in. Morneau, the runner at second. Delman Young down at first. In the air, deep to left. Back goes Crow, looking up, and it's gone. Carlos Gomez greets Jensen Lewis with a three-run jack to the bleachers in left field. And it makes it a six-run fifth inning for the Twins, who now lead it. Eight to nothing. 
Yeah, he didn't mess around, did he? First pitch. This kid is a, an aggressive hitter. Looked like a hanging breaking ball. Let's see. Boy, that's exact. Sliders go a long way with you. They're not good ones. His first pitch he makes. He deposits that into the bleachers. And Gomez realized that when you look at Jensen Lewis. That is the 10th home run given up. This has turned into a route here. Oh, well, I'm sure from the Twins' perspective, this is just what they needed after the shellacking they took at the hands of the Angels the last three games. Now they've been able to turn the tables. Eight runs, 12 hits for Minnesota. Huff ends up giving up seven tonight. Nick Punto 0 for 2. He is grounded out and struck out. One ball, two strikes. Twins have batted around here in the fifth inning. One two pitch missed in off the plate. Here's the 2 2 pitch. And he missed, makes it a full count. Payoff pitch. Weekly hit to second base. Luis Valbuena throws him out. The inning is over, but not before Minnesota breaks the game wide open. Six runs. They lead it 8-zip. That's a beautiful shot right there. Not so pretty uh, here at Progressive Field, though, where the Twins are whipping the Indians tonight eight to nothing. Bottom third of the order: Luis Valbuena, Andy Marte, Trevor Crow. Pitch number seventy coming up for Scott Baker here tonight. He's allowed just three hits. He struck out two.
Baker with a 2 1. And again, a shot out of play by Valbuena. Hey, McDonald's wants to put you on the air. Go to STOHD.com and register to win a chance to spend two innings here in the booth with us on September the 26th when the Indians play host to the Orioles. Again, it's fouled away. Boy, Valbuena has spoiled some pitches here tonight. Well, he's left a lot of fastballs out over the plate and just let him slap them. They've all been to left field. And then when he came back to get him out his last time up, threw him more of a fastball in, he grounded out to short. Down and in, full count. And the payoff pitch. Back out of play. Remember, Val Buena is a really good low ball hitter. That's why I think they're trying to run that fastball by him upstairs, but he is falling it off. This one stays fair on the infield. Orlando Cabrera has it. One down and two at bats. Luis Val Buena has seen 16, no, 17 pitches now, and he's fouled eight of them off. Here comes Andy Marte, who had a base hit, first hit of the night for Cleveland, came back in the third inning. <laughs> Marte singled right up the middle with one out in the third. Scott Baker deals, and it's down low. Scott Baker making his 13th career start against the Tribe. He is 4-5. and five. In his 12 career starts with an ERA about 386. But a couple of runs early has let him settle in. I told you from June 1st, he's really been pitching well. Six and one record looking to go to seven and one today, and he's got an eight nothing lead. Pop back into the seats. Now Baker, former second round pick back in 2003 out of Oklahoma State. And has really lived up to his billing. This down low though. Now one out walk to Andy Marte. Check out our all care dental indentures smiling easy cam. Tonight here at Progressive Field. Another beautiful summer evening. On this August the 4th. With 17 locations across northeastern Ohio, All Care Dental and Dentures make seeing the dentist easy. Trevor Crow bounced the second his first time up. That's fouled out of play. Jamden pops it to short. Cabrera has it. Two away. 
Well, if you're traveling, you can always catch the Tribe games on your computer with MLB.tv. It's the ultimate baseball experience featuring 100 live out-of-market games per week, plus on-demand games. For full details, visit Indians.com, where baseball is always on. Top of the order, Grady Sizemore, who's 0 for 2. He has struck out and grounded out tonight. Runner at first with two away here for Sizemore in the fifth. Pitch is outside for ball one. Back to the screen, one and one. The thing with young pitchers that we have seen in Cleveland many times is you just don't know when it's all going to click, when it's all going to come together. When that pitcher just suddenly realizes, I can do this and I can be really good at it. Well, I, I think that happens to all young pitchers, no matter what team you're on. The sooner you can you get the concept, and you believe you belong at this level, and you quit worrying about what you have to do and just do what you do. Baker is a guy who his drive, his desire is to be a top of the rotation. He wants to be a team's number one starter someday. Everybody projects him as a guy who is a, you know, third or fourth starter, but he's got that desire. I, I want to be. I don't want to settle for being a middle of the rotation guy. I want to be an ace. Well, uh, that's a great one to have, but. It's... Grady Sizemore strikes out, and the inning is over, and Baker has shut out the Indians through five. Six times in the fifth inning to take command of the game. And what do you know, for the fourth time tonight, Denard Spann will lead off an inning. Denard Spann, former top pick of the Twins back in 2002 at a Tampa Catholic High School. Denard Spann was a all-state wide receiver 
in high school in Florida, and that's saying something with all the talent they have. There's a high drive to right, but it's not going anywhere. Chu settles under it. One away. Time now for our Northern Ohio Toyota Dealers game recap. Jason Kubel's home run in the second inning put Minnesota in front. Joe Maurer had an RBI double that got the ball really rolling in the fifth. And then Carlos Gomez capped the six-run inning with a three-run homer. For a dealer near you, visit buyatoyota.com. Orlando Cabrera looks at a ball outside. He has doubled twice, scored a run, and driven in one. And Jensen Lewis fires it in there for a strike. One and one to count up high. Orlando Cabrera coming over to a new team in the middle of the season saying, Quote, it's a difficult situation, but the quicker you break the ice, the better it is. I faced all these guys before. I know them. But it's one thing to play against them, another thing to get to know them. That's yeah, so true. Popped in the air center field. Here comes Grady. Sizemore is there. Two quick outs. Well, we would like to fill the house for the American Heart Association. That's tomorrow night. And every ticket sold, a dollar will be donated to the charity. It's a season-long community outreach program that has already raised over $300,000 for local charities. So visit Indians.com slash fill the house for more info. Joe Maurer looks at the ball inside, 1-0. and Two-time batting champ Joe Maurer, one for three tonight with a double. RBI and a run scored. Strike to the outside corner. Strike to the outside corner. You know, early in the game, we saw Maurer swinging at pitches early in the count. In his first 202 plate appearances this year, he swung at nine first pitches. Yeah, he's a guy that rarely, rarely will go up there and make it out on one pitch. I mean, there are hitters like that. Not many. Not many at all, but... This guy, he's not afraid to hit with two strikes. He says, Rick, quote, I think ever since I can remember, I've always felt comfortable with two strikes. Well, that's the key. Most guys don't feel comfortable hitting with two strikes. They swing at pitches out of the strike zone. He's very comfortable, as he says, look at this, with two strikes. Crow with a dive, couldn't get it. Nice effort, but all that gets him is some grass-stained pants. Maurer is in the second with his second double of the night. And he's two for four. And the Twins get their fifth. Let me ask you something about that. You talk about being comfortable with two strikes. Is that simply eliminating the fear of failure? No, I don't think it's eliminating that. He's, he's comfortable. He knows the strike zone so well. Yeah, that well, ball, what would make you uncomfortable with two strikes? Well, because... you. you you know, I don't know, guys want to hit the ball a little harder. They just don't want to put it in play. or they, they don't feel comfortable with contact. They swing and miss a lot, especially nowadays, because a lot of times guys won't change their swing. There's another long drive deep to left, and this one's over the head of Crow, high off the wall. In comes Maurer to score into second with another Twins double is Justin Morneau. Back-to-back -back doubles for the second time tonight for Minnesota. Well, and, and the Twins Nine were second to, to last in the league with doubles. They, c coming into the game, only had 163. Well, they have six. 
on the night. And this one, no doubt, going off the left center field wall, or the left field wall, really. Crow has to play it. Maurer comes in. Morneau trades places with him. And the Twins continue to take out some frustration on the baseball tonight. Now Jason Kubel. Looks at a strike. Jason Kubel figures he's just one of those guys who's always in somebody's shadow. Going back to 2005 in spring training, Baseball America had him as the number two prospect in the twin system. Number one was a guy named Joe Maurer. <laughs> the following year, he was still number two. Maurer was in the big leagues. This time, he was second to Francisco Lariano. Now he's kind of the guy that probably is okay with that, too. Yeah. Said, you know, because some guys like to be that guy that they, they never see me coming. Yeah. They kind of yeah. forget about me. They overlook me. And the the next thing you know, he's got... 19 home runs and 59 runs batted in on a team that has Justin Morneau and Joe Maurer batting well, in front of them. That's all they're going to talk about there in the Twin Cities. This guy can slide under the radar. And that's, uh, it would, uh, I can see that as a player. Uh, being up front and expected to do it every day, day in and day out, is not an easy thing to do. It's nice to be a piece of that puzzle that fits right in. And that's how this Twins team is. Well, you're right. Rounded to short. It's Dribble Cabrera. Throws him out. Inning over. But the Twins have belted a season-high six doubles tonight. And they lead it. fan she's trying to dig a place to hide right now because the twins are having all the fun tonight nine zip minnesota leading it she's burying her feet in the sand <laughs> she won't be able to get up and walk out of there as dribble cabrera 0 for two tonight popped in the air down the line and dalman young came up a little short Well, you get into a game like this, Matt, 9 nothing. you're in the sixth inning. If you're a hitter, you, you, you start looking for that first available fastball to hit. And if it looks pretty good, you get after it. 
that's where when you're pitching a game like Baker is pitching today, you've got to continue to pitch and not just be, you know, okay, here you go. Start swinging a bat like they're going to hit him at him. you got to mix in your cutter. You're, you're breaking stuff. That's a tough thing for a young pitcher to, to keep focused in his mind. Right back to the screen. Oh, nice pick by Maurer behind the back coming off the screen. <laughs> he just stood there and just put it. The crowd was clapping. Why wouldn't they? Watch, watch this. This is he's going to take a peek. Oh, there it is. Watch this. Huh. Got it. <laughs> Here you go, ump. <laughs> oh, man. I think he's done that a few times. Well, well, in Minnesota, it comes back a little quicker, you know, because it's not as far back. But that, oh, hum. Now the 2-2. Just missed. Full count. Three two pitch. Hop back and all the way to the upper deck. Ninety three pitches now for Scott Baker tonight. And the payoff pitch. Is again fouled back. And, you know, this is something that I think the Twins want to see more of in terms of Baker and his development, and that is trying to pitch his way deeper into games. Well, you know, normally in the, throughout the first five innings, his ERA is well under four. But you get into that sixth inning and higher, and that's when it starts going up. So you're looking at that third time through the lineup. And that's where he's at now. Long drive to right, but. Denard Span makes the grab. One away. Well, you don't want to miss the uh, Dollar Dog Night next Tuesday. The Indians will turn, uh, return home and they face the Texas Rangers. We haven't seen those guys since opening day. So the Rangers will be in town. Dollar Dog Night next Tuesday. Well, when Baker goes six or more innings... In his career, he's 27 and 12. Yeah. And his ERA is 278. Well, they speak for themselves. There it is. I mean, he's on. He's throwing strikes. He's can take you deep into the game. And I think when you look at a lot of young guys' numbers, when they go more than six, that's usually the case. And as he continues to develop and mature, he may, he may develop the ability to economize his pitches. You know, that's that's the whole thing. When we're talking about pitches, the way pitch counts are nowadays, Matt, these guys don't throw over 100, especially if you're young. So if you're not on your game, you're not going to go more than five innings. For you to go into the six or more, you have got to be sharp and you're going to be on your game. So it's going to be an excellent game and you better win it. That's why their winning percentages are so high because your manager is going to have you out of there. You're into the bullpen. That's what they're looking for, at least six and that saves your bullpen. It doesn't save your bullpen. When you get seven, then you can save your bullpen. And you get the idea that, anyway, in Baker's case, he's not satisfied with just getting out there and getting his six innings. Well, and, not and from what out. we've seen. Oh. You know, this is a guy we're going to see a lot of. Chew strikes out. That's four Ks for Baker. Two down here in the six. Scott Baker says, quote, good is great's enemy. It's kind of an interesting quote. But, you know, and I think what he's saying is too many times you settle for just you being accept good. being good yeah. and you don't want to be great. Well, uh, you have to keep pushing yourself. I mean, uh, because at this level, you are going to get tested every time out. And, uh, you know, you can understand that as a starting pitcher. Broken bat and a flare to second. Nick Punto grabs it. And the Indians go one, two, three. Six complete. It remains Minnesota nine, Cleveland nothing.
natural gas need. Visit directenergy.com slash go try for details. And by AM PM, too much good stuff. Here in the seventh inning at Progressive Field, Tony Sipp coming on for the Tribe, third pitcher of the night. For the 23rd time, Tony 1-0, 540 ERA. Jensen Lewis won an inning in the third, gave up three hits, a couple of runs, and allowed that first hitter he faced uh, another couple inherited runners to score. Joe Creedy takes a strike. He's 0 for 3 tonight. In off the plate. Joe Creedy, two hits in his last 13 at bats. Good pitch, 93 mile an hour fastball, and Creedy couldn't catch up. Now the 2 2. And that one right back off the mask of Chris Jimenez. Joe Creedy was a fifth round pick of the White Sox back in 1996. Oh boy, just a misguided baseball coming right back into the face mask. High pop. On the infield, third baseman Johnny Peralta will take it on away. Let's get a look at our Mercedes attention assist of the game. Coming back in the first inning, just the second hit of the game, it's Cabrera. A nice easy one hop to Peralta as they turn the 5 4 3 double play. There's Delvin Young. Pop back out of play. And a count quickly 0 and 2. You talked earlier about the fact that on the surface, this trade really hasn't worked out. That well for Minnesota. No, it has, it has worked out terribly for Minnesota compared to Tampa. A lot of that has to do with expectations, and Young is one of those guys who's always had expectations. He was a number one pick back in 2003. And then when he got his chance to play in the big leagues in 06, he burst onto the scene as he strikes out here. He had... Eight hits in his first three games. He's the first guy to do that since Willie McCovey in wow. 1959. So I think part of his process has been expectations and what people think he should be doing as opposed to just letting him go out and do it. Well, that's a good point. Let's go back to the studios right now for a Ford Sports Update with Al. All right, guys, let's go to Pittsburgh where Yusmera Petit has a no-hitter going through seven. The last time the Pirates were no-hit was August of 1971 by Bob Gibson, but Petit is six outs away. Back to you. Well, that's interesting because they won the World Series in 1971. But then again, Bob Gibson was Bob Gibson. It's about as good as you can get there. Carlos Gomez is a triple away from the cycle tonight here at Progressive Field. He singled and drove in a run on the second inning. He doubled in the fourth and hit a three-run homer on the first pitch he saw in the fifth. Lines it fouled on the left side. 
What did they have? 24 players there that have hit for more than one cycle, two or more. I think there's only one to do it in both leagues. Is that correct? Has anybody done it? Two know. guys have done it in both leagues. I know one. He's trying to do it just outside of one calendar year for the second time. Well, that's right. Redbird just told me. I knew the first one. Bob Watson was the first guy to do it. Hit one in both leagues, which I guess you can believe. The second guy to hit for the cycle in both leagues is hard to believe. It's John Olerud. Now, John couldn't run a lick, so you wouldn't think he would get the triple. But, you know, he was a guy like Maurer. You know I mean, a, a type of hitter where he took a lot of pitches and he never, you know, really tried to swing too hard. You know, he could hit home runs, but the triple would seem to elude him. A little liner to second. Valbuena has it. And the Twins go 1 2 3. Stretch time in Cleveland. 9 0. Hey, fans, don't forget you can stop by Panini's and watch the game while enjoying pizza, wings, or one of their famous overstuffed sandwiches, home of the best outdoor dining in town. Visit Panini'sGrill.com. And here tonight at Progressive Field, it's all Minnesota. Nine zip, three hit shutout for Scott Baker through six innings, and he's coming out for the seventh. Well, why not? You can push him now. Hafner, Jimenez, Valbuena for the Indians here in inning number seven. Well, after the way they had their last series, like I said, their homestand, that was like night and day. They come in and they play in their division. They sweep the White Sox for three. And then the American League leading West Angels come in and they just demolish them, you know, and beat up that pitching staff. They come back, they get into the Central, they're off to a pretty good start to their road trip, and from here, they go to Detroit. 0-2 the count on Hafner. Baker hasn't made more than 20 pitches in any inning. Well, it's been a stress-free ball game. He's only had back-to-back -back hits one time, and it was Hafner's double. That followed the Peralta single with two outs. The only threat they've had on him where he's had to pitch out of trouble yeah. came with two outs. One, two in the air, left field routine for Delman Young, one away. Well, have you planned your company picnic yet the indians offer a one-of-a-kind venue here at progressive field you can choose from a variety of affordable foods and beverage options call 216-420 hits for information on group picnics
Chris Jimenez 0 for 2 tonight. He flew out to deep center field in the fourth inning that ended that potential Indians rally after they got the back-to-back -back hits that you just spoke of. The 1 0 to Jimenez. High fly ball. Deep center field. Gomez has it. Two down. Time to take advantage of the Browns' family value packs. You'll get four preseason tickets, four hot dogs, four sodas, all for just $99. That's a $160 value. Browns' family value pack available for a limited time only. Call 440-824-3434 or visit clevelandbrowns.com to order yours. Luis Valbuena takes a strike. Bouncing ball to short. Off balance throw by Cabrera, and the Indians go one, two, three, and Scott Baker finishes his night by retiring the last eight Indians in a row. the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Well, that's it for Scott Baker, who did a nice job for Ron Gardenhire tonight. Can't do much better than shut out baseball, I suppose. And Chris Perez coming on now for the Indians after Tony Sipp worked a 1-2-3 seventh inning. For Chris Perez... Making his 11th appearance on the year as a Cleveland Indian. This is his 40th appearance overall on the year. He'll face Nick Punto, Denard Span, Orlando Cabrera here in the eighth for Minnesota. Big swing and a miss, and a count one and one. Well, when you think about how fortunes have changed and how 
players come and go. Nick Punto was originally a 21st round pick of the Phillies back in 1998. Five years later, they traded him to the Minnesota Twins along with Carlos Silva for Eric Milton. Eric, I remember the left-hander. Yes, indeed. Wasn't Milton, didn't he pitch this year for the Dodgers? Come back after years and years on the DL. He did. He started uh, some games. I don't know if he's still pitching out there. But when I heard his name resurface, I said, you've got to be kidding me. Remember, he was a... He went down and signed with Cincinnati after he left Minnesota. He originally was a, a big part of the Chuck Knobloch trade. Yeah, part of the Yankees yeah. deal. Yes. Yeah. Swung on and missed. Punto goes down, one away. Hey, Sports Time Ohio, of course, you're home for the Cleveland Browns, and training camp daily continues tonight after the game. Jim Donovan, Tony Grossi, and Coach Sam bring you the latest from today's workouts in Berea. HD coverage of the Cleveland Browns only on STO and STO HD. Tonight, featuring tight end Steve Hyden, running back Jamal Lewis and Mike Fury. Denard Span takes a strike. Well, that no-no they were talking about, over. They hit, walked the leadoff guy and gave up another hit. Or gave up a hit. Boy, it just got traded there from Seattle, Ronnie Cedeno. Oh, is that the guy yeah, who got the hit? Yes, it is. <laughs> Fouled back. Jimenez got popped on the helmet on the follow-through. Yeah, tighten it up, baby. That's why you wear it. Watch the follow-through. Extension. Boom. Right on top. That's a wake-up call, huh? That should be a penalty. That should be at least five yards. Well, that should be one free kidney punch for the <laughs> catcher <laughs> when he steps back into the box. <laughs> All right, come on. Here, give well, up. He's, Bam! he's using yeah. the bat. Turn around. I get one. Coming I like back it. I you. like it. Bob Watson, if you're listening, I think we've got a solution here for the old <laughs> doink on the bat on the catcher's helmet. One free kidney punch. <laughs> Like I said, when you're sitting in that hotel room and the lights are turned out and you're staring into the darkness, <laughs> those are the kind of things that come to your mind, aren't they? <laughs> oh, you'll never know. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, you would. You'd like to peek inside once. <laughs> I'd never be the same again. 3-2, hit pretty well to center. Grady Sizemore coming in. He'll make the catch. Two down. Let's get a look at the Altel text poll results, shall we? Well, we will. Eventually. There we go. Well, the Tigers, uh, most people think, made the best deal getting Jared Washburn. Well, uh, just so they know, he was lunch tonight in Baltimore. He, he gave it up. You know, it was interesting. I read a story in the Detroit paper today, Rick. Jared Washburn, and you know in this day and age of all the movement, free agency, he got traded to a team he did not know a single player on the roster. He hadn't played with, not one guy, not in the minor leagues. That's strange. You know, That's not very one guy. Strange. Yes, it is. That is very strange. He gave up, what, six earnings tonight and five and a third. Well, last night. Justin Verlander gave up five runs in the first inning, but the Tigers were able to come back and win it. And then the uh, bottom of the ninth, walk-off homer by Cleet Thomas. But Jim Leland was saying in the paper today, just like their offensive woes are just uh, a mystery to him. They they just can't seem to figure out they why they terrible can't score. Here. Yeah, they really did. One two pitch to Orlando Cabrera is outside. Cabrera two doubles tonight, an RBI and a run scored. Roller to short is Drubal Cabrera. Throws him out, and the Twins go one, two, three. 
We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a nine zip Minnesota lead here as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Jesse Crane off for the 30th time this year. Three wins, four losses, ERA seven and a half. Jesse Crane will come on to work the eighth inning after Scott Baker went seven three hit shutout innings. He'll face Andy Marte, Trevor Crow, and Grady Sizemore. Well, when things go bad on the scoreboard, just turn to cotton candy. That'll, <laughs> yes. that'll make it a good night. Yes, it will. It'll keep you up for a little while longer <laughs> as well. Marte has walked and singled. Looks at ball one up high. This scoreboard update brought to you by Coors Light, Frost Brewed. Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Roy Halladay searching for that elusive 12th win of the year. Doesn't look like he's going to get it again there. Toronto trails New York 5-3 in the ninth. You know, once a strength for this Minnesota team, the bullpen, they have struggled oh, this yeah. year. The, the two guys that are probably... Pitched the best, best is one Joe Nathan, which we all know, and the other one was Matt Guerrero. Routine fly ball to left. Well, the Twins bullpen earn run average has soared to 628 in the second half. So since the All Star break, they have really taken it on the chin. You know, and that's the tough thing. When you're used to it, you know, getting that lead and turning it over to your bullpen and holding on and you don't, boy, that's that's tough. But here's the problem. Not counting tonight. In the 16 games since the All-Star break, their bullpen has accounted for 61 and two-thirds innings. That's close to 50% of the overall workload. Yeah. That, that's... So you're, you're leaning on them a little too much. Well, and when you get into the dog days of August, that's when they can use a little break and those starters have to turn it over, so it's a combination. This is only the fourth game since the All-Star break where a starter has gone seven or more. There you go. That all goes hand in hand, you know, when you're talking about your pitching staff. Starters give me some distance, and the relievers will they'll, yeah. they'll and that's fill what, it up. That's what Ron Gardenhire says. Look, look, we're not worried about the bullpen. It's the starters We've right. got to get straight, and the bullpen will take care of itself. Because they have the pieces, and they have the closer, and he's been pitching well, but to get to him is the key. And, you know, every team goes through it throughout the course of the year, and bullpens now with matchups have become so important. 
And when one guy and the manager calls on him to do his job, to come out and get one hitter or give me one inning, and he can't do it, then that throws a lot of different pieces out of whack in the back end of the bullpen. Trevor Crow 0 for 2 tonight. Down on the count 0 2, and it's up high. I think, really, when you look at a bullpen, when a general manager and his staff, when they sit down and they set up the bullpen and, you know, make the trades and the acquisitions, and you set your bullpen up, you set it up for best case scenario. You know, we get the game into the sixth or seventh inning, we go to this guy, we get this right. guy, lefty, righty, or whatever, to our setup guy, to our closer. But you're. Your options when things go bad are, are few and far between. And so then when you get two or three bad starts in a row, all of a sudden, you know, your op, your your plan B options, they run thin pretty quick. Well, yeah, when your starters get knocked out early, now you got to have somebody that can eat some innings. And then when you got to start using your guys out of, out of turn or, or you mess your rotation up in that bullpen, that is, it takes a while to make up. Two down for Grady Sizemore, who is 0 for 3 tonight. Foul, and Creedy can't get to that one. Well, I want to send out a happy a belated birthday to Frank Amato, who's turned 82, and also a 42nd wedding anniversary to Janet and Frank today. So, Frank, it's your lucky day. Happy anniversary and also a belated birthday. I just hope it didn't work that way in... In their house. Everybody forgot his birthday and came over to wish him happy. And, well, oh, yeah, eight, by the way, happy birthday. At 82, <laughs> that's a pretty good chance you could forget. <laughs> I just foul well, play by Sizemore. Angels, White Sox tied at three. They're in the fifth in Chicago. Well, a one-two to Sizemore. And I think that hit him, and it did. So Grady will go to first, and once again, an Indians batter is hit by a pitch, and that is now 63 times this year, the most in baseball. Now a little breaking ball down on the off the top half of the foot, and it still hurts. May not look like much, but that does hurt. We uh, we have one more birthday we got to send along to our own Jeff Yakiwiak. Oh, Yak, as he's known as. Happy birthday, pal. I'm sure he's sitting down somewhere having an adult beverage. The Yak attack was a birthday, huh? Yes, indeed. As Dribble Cabrera 0 for 3 looks at a ball down low. Now the 1 0. Popped him up, shallow left. Out goes Orlando Cabrera. He calls for it. He's got it. And we will go to the ninth inning. There the Twins lead it 9 zip.
center field fence. Four new plaques to look at out there after the weekend. Well, we go to the ninth inning here at Progressive Field tonight, and Tomo Oka coming on. Fifth Indians pitcher to work tonight. Both Tony Sipp and Chris Perez working back-to-back perfect innings. Each struck out one. And now Oka will face Joe Maurer, Justin Morneau, and Jason Kubel here in the ninth. Twins nine, Indians nothing. We're right back at it tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Aaron Laffey and Francisco Liriano. A couple of left-handers will square off. We'll have it for you right here on Sports Time Ohio. Joe Maurer takes a strike. He's two for four. Two doubles, two runs scored, and a run batted in. Aaron Laffey's four and three. Francisco Liriano, who pitches tomorrow, is four and ten. Well, that's hard to believe, isn't it? Really it really is. There's a high drive deep down the left field line. Back into the corner and playing it off the fence is Crow. And rolling into second base with his third straight double is Joe Maurer. So he now has 19 doubles on the year. You know, for, I mean, for left-handers to stay on the baseball, this is why he hits for a high average. This is a hanging breaking ball, but he doesn't try to pull it. He just stays on it and hits it off the wall in left field because it was upstairs. Look at how well he waited on that baseball. I mean, these next two guys, their strokes are about as, as nice as you can see from a left-hander. That one especially. What? can happen adversely to him if he tries to pull well, I that guess ball. when you get over, you roll over on it, you foul it off. But, I mean, he just stays back. He, he looks effortless when he swings. But And keeping the ball fair. And not only that, but driving it strong enough to hit it off the wall in left field. Bounces it in there, and a good stop by Jimenez. The Twins have made the Indian seed double tonight. Oh. Out of their 15 hits, seven doubles, two homers. Season high, seven two baggers for the Twins. Tommy, what's the uh, what's the Twins uh, franchise mark in that double category? <laughs> I'm going ten. <laughs> you wouldn't think it would be. They've always had teams that could hit. But, uh, you know, I'm not saying it would. I would think it might be in that dome with that spongy turf back yeah. about 10 years ago. If not, Killebrew and Oliva were in the middle of it somewhere along the line. Three balls and a strike to count. Oka. Delivers. And Morneau hammers it deep to right. Back goes Chu. Still back. Makes the catch in front of the fence. And back to second goes Joe Maurer. Eight is the... Not surprising that it's not more than that. They've done that twice. Yeah, there you're going to see our McDonald's I'm loving it catch. That a way to go, Merv. Get it in there. Beautiful. Now to bring up Jason Kubel is two for four tonight with a home run. He fouls it out of play. So Joe Maurer with three hits tonight will jack that batting average up a little bit more. Came in at 355. His average will end tonight at 359. Broke his bat. Valbuena will pocket it. Two down. Ichiro starts tonight at 364, so Maurer certainly is closing the gap on him. Only five points behind him. Where's Seattle tonight? Are they at home? Seattle was uh, winning four to three. So they're, they're playing Kansas City. Right. They were they're down, I guess, now five four. 
Pitches outside to Joe Creedy, who was 0 for 4 tonight. You know, the guy that surprised me who's hung around the top of the batting average race that I didn't think would is Jason Bartlett down at Tampa. He's still sitting third starting the night. Yeah, I remember when he was here, was it at 377, and then it was went on the DL and yep. was hurt. Yep. Just never saw him as that kind of hitter that would maintain this type of pace, but he's done it. Ground ball up the middle in the center field. Coming around third, Maurer will score 10 nothing Twins. Creedy gets his first hit of the night, 41st run batted in on the year. And so Joe Maurer has doubled three times and scored three runs for the Twins tonight. Well, they hit double digits. It goes right back up the middle with it. So they're going to continue to pour it on. Delman Young takes a strike. You know, speaking of league leaders, remember, right out of the uh, All-Star break, we went to Toronto, and then we were up in Seattle, and Russell Brandon was right there at the top. Home run-wise? Yeah. He's cooled off, and people are zipping past him now. Morneau, of course, leading the league at 28. Aaron Hill at Toronto with 26, tied with Mark Teixeira, Carlos Pena. Nelson Cruz at 25. Valbuena goes the short way to end the inning, but the Twins add another run. Bottom of the ninth coming up, Minnesota 10-0. What the baseball looks like to Joe Maurer tonight. <laughs> he he uh, went three for five with three doubles offensively. Part of a seven double attack for the Minnesota Twins. One off their franchise mark. Bobby Keppel will come on to finish things up for Minnesota tonight. He'll face Shinsu Chu, Johnny Peralta, and Travis Hafner. Chu is 0 for 3 tonight with a strikeout. The Indians have just three hits, and they all came within the span of two innings. Andy Marte had a one out single in the third, and then with two outs in the fourth, Peralta and Hafner had back to back hits, and that's been it. Pop back out of play. Mm -hmm. 
Down low, one ball and two strikes. Slow chopper to second. Punto throws him out, one away. Here's our Northern Ohio Buick Pontiac GMC performance of the game. Well, Baker 18 for 25 first pitch strikes. He's looking for his ninth win and a nice job tonight. Seven innings, just the three hits. First time he faced the Indians, he had 10 punch outs. Tonight, just four. But a good job. Johnny Peralta, one for three. Swings and misses. Down low. One ball, two strikes. Twins with a win tonight will get back to the 500 mark. And with Detroit, Detroit officially done. They go down. Yeah, it is a final. There's a long fly ball for Peralta deep in the left center field, and it's off the fence. Johnny's digging for two. Here's the throw, and he is going to slide in safely. A two-hit night for Johnny Peralta. He continues to swing a red-hot bat for the Indians. Johnny's 21st double and the fourth hit for the Indians. That was a spinner right there, a hanging slider. Johnny got good extension on and hits it off the wall. So a one-out double will give the Indians an opportunity to at least get on the board here in the ninth. And now Travis Hafner, who doubled his second time up tonight, is going to put the Indians on the board with a base hit to center field. Peralta comes home, and it's a 10-1 ball game. So for the second time tonight, Peralta and Hafner combined for back-to-back -back hits. This time, it gets the Indians a run. There's the two-seamer that stayed up, and Hafner hits it into center field. So they bust up the shutout, and they are on the board. It's 10-1. And it'll bring up Chris Jimenez, who is 0-3 for 3 tonight. Pitch is outside for ball one. Missed inside with it. 2-0. and oh. Missed in off the plate. And suddenly the count is 3-0 and oh on Chris Jimenez. Bobby Keppel. In a 10-1 ball game. Trying to find the strike zone again. There it is. Pours it right in there. And he walks him. So two on with one out. And Luis Valbuena will be the batter. You know, on this day in 1985, 
A couple of uh, really special marks in baseball occurred. At Yankee Stadium, Tom Seaver of the Chicago White Sox becomes the 17th player in Major League history to win 300 games as he six hits the Bronx Bombers 4-1. to one. All of the Yankees' hits were singles. I'm terrific. That was Don Baylor. He got the fly out for the final out. Pitches outside for ball one. You know what also happened on this day in 1989? Dave Steve retired the first 26 batters he faces and then gave up two hits against the Yankees. The previous September, he lost back-to-back no-hit bids with two outs in the ninth inning. I think one was against the Indians. And then he ended up no-hitting the Indians in, what was that, 1991? 92. Uh, yeah. Or something like that. I think uh, Julio Franco had a bad hop base hit with two outs in the ninth over the second baseman's head. There's a ground ball to second. This could end it. Double play, ball game over, and the Minnesota Twins win the opener by a final score tonight of 10-1. to The win goes to Scott Baker. He's now 9-7 and seven on the year. The loss to David Huff, who drops to 5-6. and six. Twins are back to 500 at 50.